today and vlogcast podcast. Think about it. This is your future. Think. Uncover think. a perspective on moving away from home for the first time. How do you prepare and cope for such a transition? And what do you leave behind? Big life events can stir up fear and anxiety. We dive into the psychology behind why change can be so unsettling. All of that coming up. Garbage vlogcast. Change always has a way of sneaking up on you when you least expect it. I mean, it was over a year ago when my world turned upside down. After spending most of my childhood in Dubai, my parents decided it was finally time to return to the Philippines. For good. So suddenly I faced not one, but two major life changes. One, moving to a new place, and the other, starting college. So the fear and uncertainty of it all was overwhelming. Even though I'm a Filipino who can speak and understand the language, the distance left me feeling like I was an alien in my own country when I got back. But more on that later. How do you feel when facing a big change? If you're like me and you feel a knot tightening in your stomach, you're not alone. Change can be unsettling, even downright uncomfortable. But why is that? In a 2010 study, one group of people viewed a painting and was told that it was done in 1905, while another group was told that it was done in 2005. Bear in mind that this is the same painting. Surprisingly, the 1905 group rated the painting much more aesthetically pleasing than the other group. Why? Because we humans have a natural liking for the familiar and something that's been around for a while. Change disrupts that familiarity. Today, we'll talk about leaving everything you know behind to start anew in a place that feels entirely different. Allow me to introduce you to someone who's about to embark on a similar adventure. Hello, my name's Nathan. I come from Baguio City, which is in the Philippines. I was born and raised here, and uh, within a few months, I'll be going to Canada. The person who owns this YouTube channel threatened me with a gun. Nathan and I have known each other at university over the past nine months, and we quickly became close friends. Soon, he'll be leaving to Canada for a long while. As Nathan prepares to leave, possibly forever, his departure remains a reminder that life just keeps on changing. I'm so excited. The guy that's there. Want me to be like that? No. Ah, okay. I, I, I don't think that's necessary though, but like... I wanted to explore how he felt about his impending departure and what led him to moving in the first place. I feel like it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You're excited. I brainwashed myself that it's exciting. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what part of it? exactly are you excited about to see my mom again <laughs> that's <laughs> one my parents they're not together anymore they annulled their marriage there's no divorce in the philippines they annulled i currently live with my dad during the time when i was in elementary during summer vacation i'll go to my mom and visit her the year before pandemic she moved to canada with the help of her mom because her mom works as a nurse in canada again so now uh, they did all of the paperwork and now I just need to be in Canada for two years to be a Canadian citizen. Right. And was this something that you were aware of, like even before you enrolled here? Yes, I was aware. That sometime soon it's gonna happen? Yeah, sometime. But did you know exactly when? No. That's, that's why I entered SLU. Moving can be stressful and emotional. It may make you feel anxious about starting over in a new place, or make you sad about leaving loved ones behind, or even overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work that needs to be done. Was there a time wherein you were trying to process like everything? Because it's like a big change that you're going through. Yeah, but I'm like, I, they, especially my parents, they kept reminding me because, you, you know, you know what? Like, like I said, parang like it pops in my head, but I just move on. They talaga they kept reminding me, think about it. This is your future. Think, think, think. And like think about it. So that means like you were given a choice whether you wanted to go. Yeah. yeah, ah, yeah. What made you want to go? Uh, one of my titas from my lola. She's also like old woman. Uh, she came from uh, America, not the Canada, but more on American because she went there as a nurse. Mm -hmm. Um, but she told me about like the pros and cons and stuff like that and like 
I mean, I processed it. Like, even if I fin finish, like, my entire BMMA here, like, that's good, right? But once I go to Canada, I still need to study for extra years and more extra time. I miss the time slot to enter universities, mm -hmm. like, to sign up, you know? So I'll be taking, like, a year gap. Uh, a gap year? Yeah, a gap year. Okay. And I'll, you know, try to work. Of course, at some point, you will get homesick. In the Canadian seminar thing, online seminar that they made me watch, made me participate in, they talked about how... Oh, you, you people that are traveling abroad, like, it will be a different culture, like that. You will feel depressed in a the time. Then on. There's like different stages. Oh, getting used to the place, like accepting it, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. What are the things that you're going to like, you know, miss from the Philippines, let alone Baguio? It's just specifically Baguio. Mm -hmm. I'll not miss the crowds. <laughs> Never the crowds. Okay. Never the tourists. <laughs> Even Friday, every Friday, mm -hmm. people will go up to Baguio. <laughs> Do not come to Baguio, we're already, we're overpopulated. Said in every Baguio school, we're already overpopulated. Do not build houses here. If in the future, you know, Baguio tourism like goes down, you know what happens. It's my fault. It's his fault. <laughs> Aside from that, like what are you going to miss? What am I going to miss? Mm -hmm. Ooh, friends, you know, close friends. Because I've been here in Baguio mm -hmm. my entire life. I visited other places, but I never studied in them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, oh wait, and like my, I feel like once I go to Canada, I will really miss the food, especially That's my cool. Lola's food, because mm. like her food, not gonna lie, is so under seasoned. But I'll miss it, you know, because like yeah. I'll be uh -huh. tasting someone else's food, you know, <laughs> not not any not anyway someone that I've been living, because uh -huh. I mean, like I said, I always been eating my Lola's food, you know. Right. Then suddenly. I'm not be able to eat it anymore. You won't be able to eat it. I'm not be able to eat it anymore. At this point, Nathan's story resonated with me. As I've mentioned before, I too have experienced what moving to a completely different country was like. My parents, shout out to them, were OFWs, overseas Filipino workers. That meant I had to grow up in a different country. On one hand, there was a large Filipino diaspora in the UAE, about 670,000 of us. My friends were mostly Filipinos, my teachers are as well. You can find a ton of them in the community. And even as I've met wonderful people from different countries, I definitely stayed connected with the Filipino culture. On the other hand, there was always a part of me that knew my experience wasn't exactly the same as kids growing up in the Philippines. So sure, there were similarities with our childhoods, but again, not the same. What he do is the car for me supposed to go straight. This guy make a left side. Look this stupid. The thought of leaving everything behind, everything familiar behind one day, just felt daunting. Because I know that I was going to end up here for college. Yes. Not specifically in Baguio, but like... In the Philippines. In the Philippines. I dreaded that day for some reason as a kid. But as I got closer to it, I also felt the same way you did. Like, mm -hmm. strangely excited and i was like where's the nervousness right mm -hmm. like you don't feel that no you don't not, feel right right now no not now maybe because it's not actually happening yet uh-huh i'm not i'm not i'm not always thinking thinking of it 24 7. You know? i guess personally for me it only hit maybe as soon as i went here mm. like oh like everything has changed but not fully given that there were other things that were going on at the time, but definitely like having, it's, it's actually, I researched it, relocation depression. Relocation. Some people do have that. Mm -mm. Being away from your hometown, no matter how excited you are, like for the new place, yeah, wherever you're going to, you're always gonna have that like, oh, there's just some things that hit different. Yeah. Right. What are you doing now to prepare to like move? Basically, I I've been trying to brainwash myself that uh, sorry, I just said the place. Basically, the pl uh, the place I'm going is just another Baguio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a city, but a provincial area. And it has mood swings of weather. <laughs> it could be cold or hot. So I've just been saying, that is Baguio part two. <laughs> so like... 
<laughs> Nothing's gonna change. Nothing's gonna change. By the way, what he said about Baguio weather is true. It really feels like it's bipolar. Sometimes in the mornings, it would be sunny. And then on the afternoons, it's just... Just as moving is a big adjustment for the person leaving, it can also leave a mark on the people you leave behind. As Nate's friend, like, what are you... What are you gonna miss from him? Him. Whoa. <laughs> hey, yo! What about you? He's our sorta of operator for the day. <laughs> so like, um, what are you gonna miss from Nate? Without Nate's presence. I remember when you were doing that. <laughs> For us, it's also a change, like for us, like here, back here. Cause like, it might not be as huge as you, but like it's still a change nonetheless. You're yes. gone, I'm basically, gone. you're gone. You can't replace a person's personality. Cause it's, it's special, it's unique. Uh huh. <laughs> Unless you don't have one, <laughs> but you do. You you have. I have you, a you have you do. I have you a do. person. <laughs> Whoa! Surprise! <laughs> you do. You do have a personality. Throughout my conversation with Nate, I kept rewinding back to how I felt a year ago when I was going through the same thing. I mean, the months leading up to my departure was probably at the time the most anxious I've ever felt. Everything was progressing so quickly, the days till the flight was always getting near and closer and closer, and I just had little to no time to process anything at all. So that led me to asking him, Do you think it's easy for you to grasp? I don't know, it's confusing. <laughs> it's confusing. Because, uh, like I said, <laughs> I'm not thinking too much of it. At the same time, there is a part that I'm thinking about it. I mean, basically, this is like, you know, step, step, like, growing up, you know, Sunday things, but, like, I don't want, like, this experience to, tell, like, force me to grow up, grow up, right? Because, <laughs> you know, I'm still 19. <laughs> I'm still 19. Uh -huh. Teenager. Those people that, like, I suppress my emotions or, like, act very much, you know? I feel like it's dumb. The <laughs> mm. <laughs> just you like doing your normal thing you will experience life like you'll experience things that you will not like you'll experience things like like a betrayal like a bad stuff you know those you just push through do not neglect the present like sure you can keep thinking about the future sure you can keep thinking about the past but use those things like both the future a uh, future and the past to help your current present. That's what I'm saying, you know? Help your current present. What do you want to say to those who are going through a similar change? Similar change. Oh, no. uh, I guess research. <laughs> and as soon as you go to that place, make connections. Dubai and there's those anime or whatever, like those people that keep moving around, you know? Like, and that they're too tired to make friends now, <laughs> you know, apparently make a connection, you know. Because they'll always be there, no man. Like, like, even if like you're gypped apart, like from this one school, they don't want to talk to you anymore. At least from this other school, you can, oh, they don't want me you anymore? Oh, well, I didn't need you. <laughs> I have other friends, Ganon. Life throws curveballs at us, sometimes unexpected, sometimes anticipated, change in all its forms is inevitable. So it's only natural for us to look back with fondness on the simplicity of yesterday or feel a wave of uncertainty about what tomorrow will hold. But Nathan is right. It's all right to think about those things, but you should never dwell too much to the point where you neglect the one important thing, the present. Hopefully your story can like serve as a learning experience for yeah. everyone, you know? And um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>